thank you very much. I also want to thank uh, Professor Banshi for inviting me to this very important meeting. And I want to discuss together with you today, the question is whether we need new guidelines in diabetes. And this is my disclosure. This is a wonderful uh, review that was written by the best people in the United States, 34 people, they're discussing the need for new guidelines in diabetes. It was published in not a very famous journal, but I suggest each one of you to read this wonderful review. But I still have questions regarding this review. The review talk about nutrition and physical activity, treatment of obesity, cardiovascular risk factor, hypoglycemia, treatment to prevent and treat diabetes complication. However, the guidelines uh, do not look uh, directly at the very old people, at those who are 65 or 75 years old or even more. And I want to remind you that 70 to 80% of our patients are patients who are older than 65 years old. So we have to ask ourselves whether these new guidelines are enough and whether they are good also for the very old diabetic patient. So let's talk about nutrition, about a healthy lifestyle. So we're well aware about the need for Mediterranean uh, or Mediterranean-like food. However, very important in the old people is high food high in protein that was shown to be also a very healthy food when you increase the percent of protein from 18% to 20%. These are new data. New data also show that eating in breaks can prevent, reduce the risk for cardiovascular events and most probably also increase life expectancy. Recently, also sugars and sweeteners have shown to be deleterious in patients with type 2 diabetes, increasing insulin resistance and increasing the risk of the patient and also high uh, protein intake. When we talk about exercise, recently several studies have shown, have demonstrated that in people older than 60, you don't need necessarily to do 150 minutes of aerobics, which is the best. What's important is to do every day uh, strength, uh, strength, uh, strength exercise of about 10 to 15 minutes. That will be the best way to keep your muscles. So these are the sources that I brought it from, the important of protein source for muscle health, mainly in elderly type 2 diabetic patients, because in type 2 diabetic patients, hyperglycemia cause reduction in the amount and reduction in the effect of the mitochondria. And this can be overcome by exercise and this can be overcome by good blood glucose control. And just to show you the, the issue of fasting that will mimic a diet in prevention of diabetes and cardiovascular disease, as I mentioned. And this study recently published in Cell demonstrating that sweeteners can be as deleterious as glucose when it comes to insulin resistance in human beings. Now, what about obesity? In obesity, we talk about prevention in the youth, but when we talk about uh, old people, the question is, should we aim at the healthy weight, which is 25 to 27 BMI in the Caucasian and even a little bit less in Indian people? What about weight maintenance? And what about the issue of gastric bypass? Now, it's very important to remember that when you get older at the age, at the age of 60, you already lost about 40% of your muscle, and you already increased about 30% in your abdominal fat. So we need to do 
cardio fitness, but we need to treat patients in a way that will increase their muscle and, and decrease their body fat. However, in the last 10 years, the issue of obesity paradox came out because it was shown that people at the age of 65 or more who weigh or who BMI is more than 30 are in a way seem to be healthier than those with a healthy weight of 25 to 27 or 27 to 30, which is overall. So the big question is, if we have a patient with BMI 30 to 35, or in India, it can be 27 to 30, should we aim to reduce his weight? And different studies have demonstrated that it is, that actually there are 16 studies to show that in the old patient with BMI above 30 in the Caucasian, there will still be and there will be, still be a positive effect in reducing weight. And what you can see here, that young patient, 35 to 50, when you reduce that, the, when they're overweight, when they have a very high, when their BMI is 40, their cardiovascular end and longevity is shorter. Similarly in patient up to the age of 69, however, even patients who are above the age of 69, will still benefit from reducing the weight to BMI of about 27 in the Caucasian. But the big question is, these studies actually show that the lower your weight is, the better. But the question is, what about treating patients who are obese with a drug that reduces weight? And here I want to show you the, st the study that I have actually uh, led it together with a TIMI group in Harvard, and this is the DECLARE study. And what we have demonstrated is that when we reduce weight at any age, let's look at 75 or more, and you can see that, we're, that with dapagliflozin, we reduce weight similarly to what we use in those 65 or less. And let's see what happened. What happened was that at the very old people, you can see that the beneficial effect on the kidney and on the heart are actually similar to those that you can see in younger patients. However, the big question is, what about the deleterious effect? What about side effect? And what you can see is that if you look at side effect, for example, major hypoglycemia, you can see that there are less major hypoglycemia and the dapagliflozin in those 75 or more, or those of 65 or more, even better than those that less than 65. If you look at diabetic ketoacidosis, you can see that the risk is similar when you are 65 to 75, or even those who are above 75, you don't actually see a difference in the risk of ketoacidosis in those patients. And all the other risk factors that comes with reduction of weight are do not seem to be more deleterious in the very old than they are in the very young. So since I missed time and I don't want to go over it, pre-diabetes is a very important issue to to discuss. However, I will leave it. I will not go to the drug on pre-diabetes, but we have to remember that pre-diabetes put you to cardiovascular risk and renal risk, and it's not only diabetes that enhance this thing. Now, another thing is what should be the aim of A1C? And you can see here that they talk about normalizing blood glucose, but trying to be up to 7.5. And here I want to say that as long as it's not the materials, I think we should aim to hemoglobin A1C less than 7 in and even normalize hemoglobin A1C at any age of the patient, mainly if you use those drugs that are not drugs that will cause hypoglycemia. Now, what about hyperglycemia? Why is it so important to aim to normal glycemia, also the very old. Sure, the target is depending on the treatment. If you give insulin, if you give hypoglycemic drug, you should be more careful at the age and you should be, you should aim to less than eight. But and in general, when you use 
the usual drug, you should aim to normalize blood glucose level as much as possible, even in the old population, using these three drugs, metformin, HGLT2, and GLP-1 RA, or any other drug that will not cause hypoglycemia. And this is because it was shown recently that in the old people, the older they are, you need to be normal glycemic in order to keep their muscles and to keep their brain. Both of them need a great effect of the mitochondria that could be reduced even when your blood glucose level or when your A1C is above 7. What about hypercholesterolemia? Uh, Stopping treatment seems to be the goal at any age. Many times combined treatment will be very, very important. The PCSK9 inhibitor, very important. And the target should be, if possible, less than 70. And the other thing is that the lower the better. And this we learn mainly from the PCSK9 that have demonstrated a great reduction when it's added to statin. And you can see the, the effect of this drug on, on uh, the level of cholesterol, as you well aware. And as, it, as you know, this was shown to reduce MACE. And not only this, this was shown to reduce mainly cardiovascular events. And recently, There was another paper demonstrating that reduction cholesterol, LDL cholesterol, from 49 to 22 still gave a beneficial effect. So I would tend to agree with the guidelines that I just mentioned to you at the beginning that we should aim to LDL of below 50 at every diabetic patient when this is easy to use. Although here they talk about going to less than 50, mainly in those who have uh, a, a, what they call extreme disease, which means diabetes and, uh, and atherosclerotic disease, or uh, can be even uh, and very extreme, those with short life expectancy because of it. And you should go and learn. But what we should learn, when you have an LDL in a patient, which is 25, 30, don't reduce drug. This is the best LDL. And the way today is to say that lower is always the better, what Brown used to say in the past. Moreover, statins have advantage, and I just bring you one, known to be an anti-inflammatory drug. And recently it was shown that if you look at patients who are under statin, you will find that about 70 to 80 percent Less of those people will have high anti-nuclear antibody, demonstrating that statin can also prevent autoimmune events in, in patients. What about hypertension? The goal in the study that I, in, in the paper I just mentioned, talk about lower than 120 to 80 because it was shown not only in diabetic, but also in diabetic, that 120 under 80 are better better than 130 under 80. And this is in spite of the finding in accord. A very important thing in the old patient is the issue of preventing cognitive dysfunction. And the question is, how do we treat them? Or how do we know that a patient have cognitive deterioration because it was found recently that the earlier you treat, the better. And you can see here that what is suggested to do at every clinic, a mini mental state, a, a glo- and the clock growing test, and different physical tests to show that your patient is still with a good cognitive. Now, what happened in those patients who do not have or who seems to have deterioration in cognition? So there are several studies to demonstrate that you can do something, mainly if, if you improve oxygenation of the brain. And one of them is uh, hyper, hyperbaric oxygen therapy. This was done in Israel, and it was demonstrated that using hyperbaric uh, 
uh, a way you can actually improve patients who have early uh, cognitive deterioration who on a daily basis do not seem to have deterioration. It was demonstrated that you improve their cognitive function. And not only this, you improve or increase the telomer size, which is very, very important for patient longevity. Now, I'm not going to go over all the complications because I, I already talked my time. But what I want to tell you is when you go to this guideline, you will find several suggestions for new guidelines in the, in the treatment of different complications, including uh, Enfield and, and Nash, but I will go, I will not go into it. The issue is that today we need new guidelines. Now, when we talk about new guidelines, we want to talk about digital therapy and part of this digital therapy, you know, the way to follow patient, the way to treat patient, uh, from uh, way above, and those are already here. There are quite many that are now being developed. And today, actually, when we talk about uh, artificial pancreas, there are ways that were being done by patients to have artificial pancreas in nearly every patient with a very minimal expenses. This is not yet assured by the FDA, but it works wonderfully. I can tell you that in my country, we have now about 4,000 type 1 diabetic patients who are using their own artificial pancreas using the data that we have with us today. So with this, I want to summarize. I want to say a big thank you. The most important thing today is to try and think what can we do mainly in the elderly, which are 70 to 80% of a diabetic patient, to improve their cardiovascular outcome, to improve their microvascular outcome, to improve their brain, their muscle, and everything which is of great importance for their everyday life. Thank you very much.